Um, it was founded at Santa Clara in 2012, and its main missions are to promote innovative approaches to teaching and research training and to address highly ethical standards and social responsibility. Um, also, okay. Next, we're going to go into basically just faculty and staff and just the people that make up the SEU BioE department. Um, and we're going to start with the department chair, Dr. Prashant Suri. Um, he's a new department chair. I think he just uh, started this year, at the end of this year. So he's pretty new. Um, and then some associate professors are Dr. Rossi, Dr. Luke, and Dr. Kim. And then um, some lecturers, Dr. Mobed Miramadi and Dr. Park. Side note is my advisor. Um, she's amazing. I, um, and then some professors, Dr. Julius Scott and Dr. Yan. Um, everybody here was in Dr. Yan's, Dr. Yan's class this quarter. Yeah. yeah. Mechanics. Yeah. And then, um, we also have Dr. Zhang. Um, we have Mayela Gardea, who is a senior administrative assistant. I've, like, um, from what I've experienced and, like, from what I've heard, she's basically person who makes it all like work behind the scenes like if you wanted to take some other classes outside Santa Clara that like count for credit she's the person you like go to for all of that like she's really helpful um and then Benjamin Moriyama and um Dr. Parsa Hosseini so yeah Okay, and then I know we're all biomolecular, but we st it's still fair to talk about the other two tracks. Um, so at Santa Clara, we have three bioengineering tracks. So we have the biomolecular side, we have the medical device, and then we have pre-med um, for like doctor people, doctor stuff. Not my cup of tea, but that's fine. Um, so for the most part, um, at least for the first year, it's really pretty like relatively easy to switch between the tracks um I think some people on this call have actually <laughs> done that already um because for the most part especially the first two quarters it's all basically the same for most engineers anyway you have to do your chemistry um your calculus and your physics and then the only thing that really starts changing between the bio e tracks are um in your spring quarter when you take like biology versus um I think the like the biomechanics class um and so if like midway through your first year um or even like beyond that you decide like oh I actually am not really passionate about some of the things that we have on the biomolecular track like protein engineering protein therapeutics genome engineering biofuel engineering um those things and you're like no I'm actually more into like design and microfluidics which are really um major parts of the medical device track at Santa Clara or you're like no actually I want to become a doctor those things can be really easily switched over, um, especially during your first two years at Santa Clara. But even um, beyond that, sometimes if you really have the work ethic and you're willing to switch up a bunch of those classes later on um, in your bioengineering career um, at SEU, you're able to do that pretty easily. I guess something I could add is that mm -hmm. um, just based upon my girlfriend's experience with the actual pre-med track, it's a lot more biology and chemistry based. So you will have to complete the whole lineage of chemistry, including OCHEM, which mm. a lot of us have mixed feelings about. And then you would also have to complete the whole lineage of the biology class. So biology 1A, and then 2, and then 3. And it just keeps going. Yeah. So it is so a lot more, yeah, yeah. It's a lot more heavy in chemistry and biology than the other tracks. Mm hmm. I was going to say that just that like because when I got to um, Micah and you talked about this earlier like I switched from pre-med to biomolecular um, but I still might want to go to med school and I think the main difference between the pre-med track and the biomolecular track is just that like um, the emphasis on the other stuff so in biomolecular I think only stop bio you, you only do one class of biology but the point for pre-med is kind of like you need to have those requirements, the prerequisites to apply to med school. So they like they make sure you get that, but then still get a bioengineering knowledge, if that makes sense. So even though I'm on the biomolecular track, I'm still going to take all the other um, biology classes. And then like in the last organic chemistry class, because like I am a biology minor, like um, I still have to do that. Um, so if you have questions about that later on, 
split. Yeah. All right. I think that's all we have for the tracks. Um, I think we already covered that. Y'all are biomolecular, the right track, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you ever have any like questions or concerns about um switching tracks or if you want to like explore what the other ones are like, there's um we'll talk about this a little later on in the presentation, but there's plenty of clubs that you can join that have people from other tracks. And you can always, of course, talk to your advisors or even any of us if you ever have any questions or concerns and you're like, maybe this isn't the exact track for me, or like what can I expect to see in the next four years? Uh, next slide. Oh, yeah. So next, we're just going to talk about some of our favorite classes so far. Um, it's only been a year for us, uh, but I think we've still had a decent amount of experience with the engineering school and the BioE department as a whole. So we're just going to touch on that. Y'all want to start? We can go in order. Okay, I'll start. Um, sorry, I don't know if I was late, but like my Wi-Fi froze for yeah, a second. So good. Um, um, but I was going to say my... um favorite two classes that I've taken. I haven't really gotten to take a lot of classes in the bioengineering department because I um I switched like midway through my year. So I never got to take introduction to physiology with all, which all the bio molecular students take in their first quarter. And as you can see, like that was everybody's favorite class for some reason. So I'm gonna take it next um this coming um quarter and we'll see if I like it that much. I'm excited. But uh, like aside from that, I've um my favorite classes are the introduction to organic chemistry, um because like Gerardo said, it was it was really hard, but I like chemistry, so I feel like it kind of made up for it because it was a lot of interesting content, and I was really lucky to have a teacher that I liked or a professor that I liked, um, and he definitely like did his best to get us through, and like I didn't know if I was gonna pass for sure but I ended up passing. So that that's all you can ask for. And then also um, Math 13, which is the Calculus 3. Um, I liked it because, I don't know, it was pretty, it was not too challenging, but also like interesting enough because it's like a bunch of 3D um, things and like stuff that I've never really done before. Guess I'll go next. So I would say one of my favorite classes I've taken to Santa Clara for sure in my top three would be BioE 21, Introduction to Physiology. Uh, I would say the big reason for that would be just the professor. Dr. Park was an amazing professor. Every time, you know, you walk into that classroom, she would always be excited. She would always, you know, she had like this energy that, you know, made you want to learn. And you kind of, if you sat down, you'd be like, yes, yes. You would, yeah, I just enjoyed the content. Um, Kind of similarly with uh, CTW 1 and 2, critical thinking and writing, I had it with the same professor, um, Dr. Jeffra. Um, unfortunately, he moved to a different university. Uh, so, you know, you some of you won't be able to take his class, but I loved his class. Um, it was an amazing class. He always, once again, he always had a lot of energy, would come into the class. He was always understanding if you wanted, you know, for an extension, if you asked him for that, always down to help you at any time. So I would say that these two were like top three for sure. Yeah, I'm in a similar boat as Eduardo. Uh, I have the same exact class that I liked. Dr. Park was just an iconic professor for me, and she honestly like made me get excited for bio week starting my first quarter at Santa Clara. And honestly, like, it was interesting because I like I had a math class right before, and I had like only ten minute, ten minutes to get there. But even then, like, it's just that even that stress from that was worth it because I knew that I was going to be taking her class right after. Um, she had just a very specific way of teaching. She was very passionate about the way she taught things. And even when like the time for tests came around, she was very supportive and gave us a bunch of resources so we could prepare properly. Then for CTW 1 and 2 with Professor Jeffra, I mean, he was such an amazing professor. I mean, he, he would make the classroom feel like a very safe space. We would talk about very vulnerable topics most of the time. And I mean, his... The way that he ran the class, it was about the California dream, about coming to the U.S. and looking for prosperous opportunities. So it was a very interesting topic. And uh, I was able to resonate a lot, given that my, my parents are immigrants. And so the way he just ran the class, allowing us to share our ideas, 
it, it, I just really appreciated that. Yeah, so um, I think my favorite class that I've taken so far at Santa Clara was Engineering 16. Um, I think most engineers, if not um, only bioengineers, take that their sophomore year, their second year. Um, but just the way my schedule worked out, I just took it winter quarter, um, so two quarters ago. And genuinely, it was such an interesting class. So at Santa Clara, we're required to take three um, religion classes. Uh, courses not sure if you know that um, but engineering 16 counts as one of those religion courses for engineers um, it counts as your first engineering uh, first religion course um, and so this was I, I took it and it was all about how um, like religion and cultures and values and customs play a role in the way that we design and think about technology and it was such an interesting angle to like take religion and um, we talked a lot about like ethics and morals and then the second course of this is engineering 19 which I'm going to be taking my second year um, and I'm really looking forward to it I had Dr. Gaudet and he's just so passionate and he's so like well spoken and like interested in everything that all his students have to say that like every morning like I was my first class of the day and I would still like wake up like excited to go to that which says something about me because I'm not a morning person at all um, and then, you know, the basic answer, bio E21, um, the literal only downside of that class was that the classroom was always cold. Like that was the only bad thing I have to say about it. Um, and I mean, it was definitely like a bit difficult because I've never taken like any sort of anatomy physiology class before in my life. Like I've taken AP bio and that was basically where my anatomy knowledge stops. Um, but like, we like Dr. Park taught us like so much so in depth and she did these little, little like mini micro lecture videos that we had to watch before um, and after classes and I found those so helpful to make sure that I was like staying on track with my work and making sure that I you know wasn't like slacking behind and if I had any questions like there were resources I could fall back on and she was always so willing to answer questions after class um, but yeah those are my two favorites. <laughs> Um, so mine was also bio E21, but to hype you up even more for Dr. Park's class, there's just the way she structured it, you know, like every week you would learn about like a new system and that just like excited me more. And I don't know if I'm like an anatomy girl, but maybe that's why like it excited me a lot. And um, she also like did like a little like along with like the micro lecture she also did like a little mini introduction to like flipped classes so we had like one or two of those and it kind of like prepared me for chem 31 which was an actual flipped class so she kind of like gave us like kind of like a little tutorial on like flipped classes and then um I really liked chem 12 with Dr. B um, because she was really nice and her office hours really helped and I don't know I just found it like really fun and just the way she taught and she had like slides and you could like either like print out or like have like the slides in like a like your virtual notebook well we can answer that um and then she has like fill in the blanks so that you don't have to like actually write everything so you have like the notes but all you have to do is um you know, like just fill in the blanks while she's presenting. Um, this is fun. Did uh, Thomas and like out? Uh, oh no, no, she's still here. He says you're the host now, you so good? I guess you get to share the screen. Guys, I'm so sorry. No, you're so good. It's okay. We can look at each other's faces for a little bit. I am so sorry. I think that's the slide we were on. Um, next slide, please. I think you have to switch slides. Unless your screen's frozen. Made a freeze up. <laughs> I think. Maybe. Uh -huh. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, there we, we go. <laughs> yeah. 
So we have a variety of clubs. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. You can see the clubs on campus right now. So we have a variety of clubs here on Santa Clara and um I can share my screen. Okay. Um not your favorite snack. Technical difficulty. Yeah. There we are. Okay, yeah. So we have a few clubs here in Santa Clara that tend to like offer um services just to like any engineering student, but specifically for like bioengineering students, we have just to mention a few BMS, Biomedical Engineering Society. We tend to host a bunch of events, either informational, even networking events for students who are interested in that in biomedical field. There's also SHIP which is for his, well, it, it tends to allude more to Hispanic students who are involved in engineering. Uh, it's just anyone who's involved in STEM is welcome to join. Theta Tau is one of our fraternities that helps uh, create an environment for engineering students. It's a professional fraternity, so you don't have to worry about the whole unprofessional side. It's un it's recognized by, the, by the, the campus, by the university. I think one of my friends is involved in it. He's been, he's it's helped him grow his network and helped them just make really good friends and connections. We also have Engineers Without Borders, and it's it's another way to, for students to connect. Uh, it's just a great community of engineers. But yeah, we have plenty of resources for bioengineering students. It's just a matter of looking for them and asking around. Up next, we have the four plus one graduate program. So essentially, you know, a quick little rundown on what this is. It's a, a program that you can pretty much do your master's with an extra year. You would start doing master classes, I believe, your fourth year, your senior year. And then by the time, you know, you do an extra year, you would graduate with your master de master's degree in uh, engineering. So an engineering department shortcut, like I just kind of stated, apply by the end of your junior year. So you should have that. You should talk with your advisor if you really intend on doing that. And I think they do a meeting in between the year uh, talking about this and if you're interested in all that. Uh, so like I said, you begin taking graduate level courses during senior year. What are some of the advantages? Well, you have the waived application fees and the GRE general test requirement. Typically to get a master's degree within one year of graduation, that's one of the advantages. Cost effective. So pretty much you would, instead of doing, taking two years and paying the two years that it would take you to normally get that master's degree, you would only have to pay one year. Uh, and then you can stay at Santa Clara for a little longer. So let's say you have research or TA jobs, you can access these resources and, you know, stay on campus. Um, and then also just quick note, um, recently they announced that there is a new P there's a, the newest of only four PhD engineering programs are offered at Santa Clara. I believe that's the bioengineering one. So if you're interested in that, I think there's an article on the website you can read. So that's pretty much it. Question. Okay. So we have a question about what is like flipped classes. Um, it's kind of like you basically watch the lecture before going to the lecture and then the lecture is kind of about, you know, your homework of watching the lecture, if that makes sense. So for um, OCHEM 31, we he had us like watch a lecture or two um, before coming to class. And then basically he would like do like little like quizzes of like moving electrons and um, also like working through problems. So yeah, it's kind of just like a different format of classes. Yeah, but... essentially, I mean, another way to describe it is that what you would expect from a normal class where you do homework at home, you're not doing that. Instead, you're teaching yourself at home. And then when you go to class, you're actually doing what you would consider homework problems, but they're just